It is a warm dawn in Bolson province of Guanacaste in Costa Rica, although with a little mist, the buffaloes do not wait until it is time for milking. He is Carlos who with affection, subtlety and good management practices is in charge of taking care of them since he was born this time. That is... Wetland Buffalo and Organic Dairy in Costa Rica. It's very good. She was leaving it totally loose without a rejo and without a gator to achieve this. You have to tame it like a bucket of baby boys three days after being born we began to moor. To winch. What would make you nod now the averages are large and apart. Yeah, fighting. And even meek looking for another lap. She is alone so that they understand a little better. Ooh. The cattle are normal with them. Sí. On behalf of the calf when there is a big milking one calls the cow and the calf answers. <coughs> then the cow leaves and arrives when it is milked day by day they adapt in that way. And below is a strainer, the one above is a filter. They did not give all the milk they had to give as it is not ordered the day if we milk them day by day then the animals and having a process of another adaptation. The milk loosens more. Because I tried to find a way to leave them in a good pasture. But they did not loosen all the milk. Because it is not milked day by day. These buffaloes are the protagonists of a project that began a few years ago in this farm in the lower basin of the Tempisk River, a wetland area where its owner, Mr. Luis Roberto Clacker, in the company of Mr. Gerardo Barbosa, a biologist and buffalo and wetland researcher, were able to witness and verify how, through rotational grazing and proper management, the water buffalo, thanks to its anatomical and physiological characteristics constitutes an excellent management tool of the excess vegetation of the wetlands, exposing the mirrors of water in exposed mud conditions with seeds, insects and other microorganisms favoring the arrival of abundant and diverse aquatic birds. These ecosystems, through rotational grazing with buffaloes, conserve their basic characteristics over time in terms of components and interactions. The animals develop with good productivity while carrying out the function of clearing the vegetation in this type of area. And it has become a model of a local adaptation management strategy against the climate change because with feeding based on natural pastures it has been shown. Reduction in the emission of greenhouse gases in addition to meat and milk that produced in an ecological way gives it added value for that they have had the support of the National Technical University of Costa Rica, then its director of research, Mr. Eduardo Barantes Guevara, will teach us what to do with the milk that Carlos collected this morning. Two types of fresh and spun artisanal cheese. On a small scale we have the production of artisanal cheeses that in our countries are Based a lot on what fresh cheeses are today we are going to make a demonstration of two types of cheese that are made in our regions. Everything starts with obtaining milk at the farm level. And once it is received in the processing area we need to make some basic quality tests. One of those is the acidity test this is a basic test that is done to determine how acidic the milk is acidity is a way of determining how good the milk is. 
In terms of bacteria content, in an indirect way, the more bacteria the milk has, the more acidification it generates and that directly affects the shelf life of the cheese, but it also affects the quality of the protein, which is essential for any type of cheese or yogurt that we are going to make to be generated later. The milk must come from data that is free of pathogenic diseases that can be transmitted to humans, such as brucellosis and tuberculosis, that is essential to guarantee safety to the consumer and that they will not get sick from the products that we produce after the acidity test. The coagulation of the milk follows the process previously carried out under the following indications. To begin with, the appropriate thing is that the milk is at a temperature higher than 34 degrees centigrade. This is how it comes from milking these types of rennet can be in powder or liquid when. The liquid is made, which is the most appropriate. Since the manufacturer's recommendation regarding the proportion must be followed, we recommend that at the field level at the artisanal level, to do this with measure, we must know as accurately as possible how much milk we have for the process and based on that measure, how much rennet we should add and for that we can use a new syringe. Of this type that comes calibrated with centimeters, we measure the appropriate amount and add this to the milk. Well then immediately, with some species of stirrer we stir all the milk so that the rennet is evenly distributed after approximately 35 minutes we already have a clot in the curd and that clot is important from now on that we reduce the size of that clot for that we use equipment similar to this by passing it several times, we are going to have grains of approximately 1 cm in square. Then we pass this several times from one side to the other. And here we already obtain the curd. Divided into different portions, that means something like this. Buffalo milk contains percentages of fat between 7 and 8 percent and protein from 4 percent. This is a very very good quality milk with solids of about 17 and 18 percent that does two things. One that there is more mass and less weight in these types of products. And also notice the color of this curd, which is white. The buffaloes do not synthesize beta carotene from green grasses and therefore milk will always be white never we are going to have yellowish milk in the milk in the case of buffalo milk after throughout this process we do a little shaking to help the whey dissolve and separate this is called synergesis or separation of the whey and we are then ready to remove a little of that way to wake up and obtain the rennet. There are several methods. One of the most practical methods is that the ice cream is given directly in the molds before adding the salt, the sauce and a proportion of approximately 1 kilo of salt for every 100 liters of milk. We add the salt even if the milk has a certain proportion of whey. We stir and here we are going to carry out a process called osmosis and diffusion. 
What does this mean? That it is going to equalize. Try to equalize the loads of salt that are outside the curd with those that are inside the curd. This process makes us a salty called brine salting is something very practical and that allows us to obtain better yields because we do not have to reduce the size and it is to overcome both the curd but that we will not have to cut it again later either and that makes us save solid solids is essential in these processes because cheeses tend to lose when we make cheese milk it tends to lose a lot of solids a lot of water from 100 liters of buffalo milk you get 80% whey and 20% cheese expect a yield of approximately 5 kilos of milk to make a kilo of cheese so we add this curd with a little whey to the molds which the whey will come out of the blanket after this we put a firmer plastic band on this process to treat to lower the rennet and the blanket is crossed blanket to here blanket to there immediately makes a flip what happens at this moment the same weight of the cheese is pressing the curd so that it continues in the draining process. We do this for 5 minutes at a side 5 minutes to the other side. After 30 minutes, the cheese is removed from the mold. In this case, it is fractionated homogeneously for subsequent marketing. This is a fresh buffalo milk cheese. The turn for this delicacy of Italian origin. The spun cheese as opposed to the fresh cheese. That we have made previously is a curd that acidifies for approximately 4 hours. After the time in which the last cut was made and in which it was left with a little way that acidification process what it does is increase the levels of lactic acid that with hot water we manage to make a thread and the curd has two peculiarities one that by adding hot water we promote its formation the thread and in this heating process we also generate that the curd is eliminated certain bacteria, that is, we could say that there is a pseudo-authorization of milk as it is made with hot water the shelf life of the product is longer and it is also a cheese that it has a special characteristic because it can be used both as a table cheese as an ingredient it is a special cheese for making pizzas it is a cheese for making lasagna and following the safety regulations of course because always using gloves the cheese it is formulated in such a way that a thread is made a thread is made you see the texture that this cheese generates generates a thread that allows us to make this type of maneuver Quickly this is not so hot, the typical formula that is made here is a cheese that it's called a palm heart cheese, which is rolled, a wheel at this time we rub to add the salt, this is a quick way and we begin to make a wheel, 
a wheel in this way. The size depends on the price of the cheese. It can be 300 grams, or it can be up to 500 grams. It is thought here and put into a mold similar to this one that will give us a very particular figure in this case. Let us remember that cheeses are preserved in three basic ways due to the significance generated by their own curd by salt that we add and for cooling. This is how organic dairy is made from buffalo milk produced by PRV in moisture gives them added value that becomes an excellent alternative of income for ranchers located in the humid regions.